most of the readers of the magazine are pretty familiar with the idea that we may have a very um, unrecognised ancient and glorious past. The concept of having ancient high-tech civilizations long, long before our own is, is not a new idea to most of the people in the audience. However, what is new is some of the um, evidence that's emerging. I know a lot of people have seen Graham Hancock's work and Michael Cremo's collection of artefacts in his books, but um, there is even more coming to light. Klaus Doner is based in Vienna, Austria. He's an art exhibition curator. For the last decade or so, he's been investigating archaeological mysteries, including out-of-place artefacts, or uparts, as they're often called. In other words, artefacts that shouldn't exist according to the scientific orthodoxy. He went on to set up a touring exhibition called Unsolved Mysteries, having gathered more than 3,000 pieces which have no logical explanation. Many of these pieces are from secret private collections. Thank you. You've got two. And um, I guess other museums as well that Klaus has had access to. So far the exhibition has been staged in Austria, Germany, Switzerland and South Korea. One day we hope to get him down here to Australia and you'll be reading about it in Nexus when we organise that. Among the exhibition pieces are a Nephilim giant's bones which give a different take on the history of humanity and suggests the possibility of extraterrestrial influence. Other items that have piqued Klaus's interest include ancient model aircraft from Egypt and Colombia, 2,000 year old bat electrical batteries found in Iraq, precision glass lenses dug up from Viking graves, and um, well, there's a whole list of them here, but Klaus has got hundreds of photos here and pictures of what he's picked up on his collection around the world. Klaus firmly believes we are not alone and never have been. The physical evidence he shows has radical implications for how we look at human history. His territory covers Atlantis, reptilian humanoids, the Anunnaki, ancient science and symbolism, a global language and more. This is Klaus's first appearance at a Nexus conference, so I gather it's his first time in Australia. Yes. So please give him a big warm Nexus conference welcome. Klaus Stoner, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I would like to congratulate and uh, say thanks to Duncan and his uh, group, his uh, staff, because they invited me and uh, made me able to talk to you, and the organization is just perfect. Thank you very much, Duncan. Uh, first of all, shortly, I would like to inform you how I came to do uh, to these uh, researches. Uh, since 20 years I'm planning and uh, organizing cultural exhibitions from Austria to Japan and you can imagine how many times I was in airplane between Austria and Japan and uh, in the airplane and through jet lag in Japan I read many books from Deniken, Robert Charou and many other writers and believe me I was the one who did not believe that all these pieces are existing and they are all original. Then I had the naive idea it would be the easiest thing to bring all or some of those pieces to Vienna into an exhibition called Unsolved Mysteries and then the scientists have a chance to prove that those artifacts are not original and old. And it put me really into hell because I found some researchers, some uh, scientists, they did checkings on some of those pieces and they found out that we would not be able to do the same pieces from the same material in our days and we could not prove that one of those artifacts was new made. So all of you, you know the legends and stories, old stories, uh, talking about giants, about Atlantis, about Mu and many other things. I found out in the last several years that many of the legions have a big, big portion of reality. For example, oh, and of course I would like to say that I cannot give you shocking information like Donna and Jim this morning, but I can only leave you, leave you with uh, open questions. Maybe you have some own ideas and I start with the pyramids because you can find pyramids all over the world. I start with the pyramids of Giza, everybody of you know them. 
I show you the Sun Pyramid in Teotihuacan in Mexico, 60 kilometers north of Mexico. Uh, this is a model of the pyramid area which uh, was in former days. Uh, this is a pyramid in China, another one in China, another one in China, and the next pyramids we got photos from a Chinese archaeologist from southern uh, Mongolia, a very strange form of pyramids. And a few weeks ago, I got information from China about a private collection which uh, the owner got from his great-grandfather. And he found it in southern Mongolia around the area where you saw the pyramids. Uh, the dating, official dating of the pyramids in southern Mongolia is between 5,000 and 8,000 years. So those artifacts must be at least older than 5,000 years, but I think they are very much older. And you see here one artifact, it's a bronze statue found in southern Mongolia, and it looks definitely like the, uh, um, the Egyptian uh, godness. Isis. Here you have the details and you can see here the horns and what the archaeologists call it uh, the sun, but uh, several researchers, uh, for example a Russian researcher, Professor Muldashev, he did many researches in Tibet, Egypt and many other countries, he thinks that this ball is not showing the sun, but he calls it, it shows the prana or the kind of orb which is energy, pure energy. Here you have some photos of uh, Egyptian Isis and you can see that the piece from southern Mongolia is very similar. And the next following artifacts are made out of jade, very hard jade material and very strange artifacts. It is not known what culture did those pieces and when, but they think about five to eight thousand years ago. The next pyramid is from Canarian Island, another one Canarian Island, and another one then you can see some pyramids from Greece. This one is in Hellenikon in Greece. The next one is from Italy, from Sicily, Italy, from uh, Sardinia in Italy, and the next photo shows how they restored it. Uh, this is a, a very old drawing from Tahiti, from a pyramid. I do not uh, think that it exists in our days. The next one is from Mauritius Island. These two pyramids are from Taiwan. And even in Austria, we have a pyramid of stones. Uh, so you can see pyramids, you can find them all over the world. And I think also there was a writing existing the same writing all over the, the earth, which I show you other photos uh, following. So I think the pyramids, they had a connection somehow, and they were not all, or only some of them were really graves. I think that they had other uh, functions, but still the scientists do not have a real answer. This photo, I put it on because I did not know that Duncan with his magazine is much faster than I. He did a very good report about stone buildings in South Africa in his last Nexus magazine. So you can find, I don't have to talk a lot, you can read a real good explanation in uh, the June-July Nexus magazine. Uh, and an African uh, owner of a fire protection company, he owns several helicopters and small airplanes for protection of fire. And he was flying over South Africa the last 20 years. And he did thousands of photos, he found thousands of stone circles all over South Africa. 
and the official archaeological explanation is that those stone circles were cow stologies. But look at these pictures and do you really think that those were st uh, cow stologies? I don't think so because they are as, uh, exactly archaeoastronomical places or works. And uh, I had a telephone call last week with, with uh, the second finder, Michael Tellinger, and he told me that they did research with uh, high-tech instruments inside of some of the stone circles, and they produce a sound of 14.5 gigahertz with 72 decibel, and they are quite sure that these sounds are producing a kind of energy. Another stone circle, another one, and if you look, they are mostly closed and they have a very uh, near uh, connection to the uh, stone buildings in uh, Zimbabwe. They also informed me that they found gold mines older than around 40,000 years in South Africa. Uh, they also found a so-called Adam's calendar because it's an astronomical site with stones. And you can see here the winter solistic sunset on 21st of June 2006. And here the sun is exactly on top of the larger stone. And Michael told me that they, do, they are doing now researches on this two mountains, and there is a third one, he told me, which is not visible on this photo, and they are exactly located like the great three pyramids in Egypt and have a connection to the Orion. And he thinks that those mountains are pyramids, but they have to start with diggings and research. Uh, they also found a few years ago in uh, Bosnia, in Europe, two big mountains. They existed for long times and they had the scale of two pyramids and they did some excavations and they found out that those two mountains were in former days pyramids and the, one of them is bigger than the Great Pyramid of Giza. Uh, the government of Bosnia uh, prohibited last year the further excavations. Here you have the picture of the Adam's calendar and some more stone circles, but as I told you, uh, Nexus magazine has several pages with the detail information about them. Here, this one I got from Russia. It, they f did an excavation close to Chernobyl. The area there is called Arkaim. It's a military restricted area. And they found also very big stone monuments, which shows that in former days they had uh, villages, but built in circle forms. And again, another photo from Arkaim, Russia, which shows quite similar stone circle like in South Africa. In May, I was invited by a private uh, research group to Sardinia in uh, Italy. And on Sardinia, they, there existed about 8,000 stone monuments called nuragas. Uh, the nuragas are explained by the Italian archaeologists as protection towers. But for anybody who has a little bit military knowledge knows that how can you build a defense tower with up to 18 meters with only one entrance and no window? How can you really protect yourself? Because if an enemy wants to kill you, he just put fire on the entrance and waits until you have to get out. And this private researching group did the last 10 years research on certain days, on certain hours, especially on the winter changement, uh, on the um, uh, equinoxial lines and everything, and they definitely have the approval that those towers were archaeoastronomical towers. 
This is one inside photo. And one of the towers has a small, uh, like a small window on top, and only on certain day of the year, the sun puts, uh, presents uh, the bull's head on the center of the Nurage. And the bull's head was a northern star before the great flood, or let's say pre-Diluvian, around 10 to 12,000 years ago. The age dating of those towers officially is about two to 3,000 years. But this group and many other persons believe that they are much, much older, that they are pre-Diluvian time. Uh, older than 10,000 years, and how can you make a dating on stone buildings? If you find a ceramic, you can date it because it's organic material. But who tells us if there were not thousands of years later, people just using those nuragas for living or for overnight or for protection of uh, heavy rain or something like this. So it doesn't say if you find in an old stone monument an artifact that this artifact is exactly the age of the piece you found. Here you have the drawing of the biggest nurage and here on this side you have small, uh, uh, small windows. They are that deep and they are very small, so even for protection, how can you protect your enemies if you have to bow down, you only can hit him with an arrow mainly in his feet. That means it wouldn't help a lot. And this group found out that exactly on the equinoxial t terms, the sun, uh, uh, the sun rise comes in here and goes out here. And if they followed this in about 500 meters, you have another nurage, another 500 meters, another, so they are all connected. And I already informed them if they might be able to do some research with high-tech insight, because I think that also these nurages produce a kind of sign, a sound or energy. And another strange story is that like the legions of the giants, which we find also all over the world, every uh, country, every tribe worldwide has the legions about the giants. And in uh, Sardinia, there is the legion of the giants, and they find, and there are many, many of very big stone graves, and they all have the form of the bull's head. And they say, so the old people, I met some very old gentlemen there, and they said that when they were young, uh, Italian archaeologists excavated giants with over three meters, and they took the bones with them. But if you ask anybody officially, giants in Sardinia never existed. They built also very... Uh, in very hard stone, they built rooms going back from first to second to third, even to the fourth room with sm very small entrances. And this is the picture of a so-called giant grave. It's very big and on the left side and right side you have the form of the horns and on the back side the head of the bull. Very interesting also that they found even giant graves under the sea level. That means from a time where the sea was much deeper than in our days. This is a picture, a photo from Bimini. Island, from Bimini. They found very big hand-worked stones, a lot of them, and as Edgar Casey said, around Bimini, they might find a pyramid from Atlantis. This one and the next photo was done by a Russian research uh, ship. They found um, pyramid form constructions in 700 meter deepness. 
And now we are going to Yonaguni. Yonaguni is the southest island in Japan. And Professor Masaaki Kimura is doing researches since 1985. And the first what they found through a, a professional diver was a very big monument you have here, the drawing, how it looks. And until now, Professor Kimura has problems of the acceptance of this stone monument done by human because the official archaeologists say it is natural. But, and he said, why it is natural? They said because the stairs are too big for normal humans, so that couldn't be uh, made by human for human. But again, we have even in Japan the stories of giants. Maybe the people at those time were much taller than in our time. Here you have several pictures, like this one in the center. It looks like a head. He calls it the Japanese uh, Sphinx. But here you can see the huge uh, work of a turtle. And there is a second one there of a big eagle or a very big bird. I mean, the nature makes many things, but I do not think that the nature can do a pyramid, uh, can do a turtle and a big eagle. And a few, few months ago, Professor Kimura informed me that he even found a stadium with seat rows and stairs going up. I know that the nature can do a lot, but not a stadium like the Colosseum in Rome. Here you see how big and how perfect done is this monument. And most of all, if it's natural and the stone broke, was broken down here, where are the stones? There are no stones uh, close to this monument. Here, everybody of you know already the Piri Reis map. Here you see how perfect it was. And that's the so-called world stone map. We found it in the year 2000 in a private collection with other 350 pieces which do not have any connection to any existing, existing or known South American culture. This stone and the other artifacts were found in the year 1984 by engineer Sotomayor uh, while he was in charge for gold digging for a British mining company. He found a tunnel system and in there were those 350 pieces. This stone is about 350 kilos uh, in weight. It's granite and it has a natural quartz line, which you see here, but all the other things are encarved. And for example, it starts here on this side. You can see that there is an eye inlay. This is the area of approximately Israel or the Near East. From here, you can see Italy, Greek, the quartz line, the natural quartz line goes over the Mediterranean, enters here into the Atlantic Ocean, and here you have one continent which does not exist in our days, and I think this shows Atlantis. Then it enters into South America, and here is another, this is the Bay of Guayaquil in our days. And here you have another inlay and another one going up. And here is a circle inlay. And that's exactly the place where all those pieces were found. Uh, this is also the place where we found the best water which exists on our earth, earth because it has an energy, natural energy, up to 1.5 million Bovi. Bovi was a French researcher. And the strongest water in Europe is the well of Fatima, which has 640,000 Bovi. But this water in Ecuador has 1.5 million 
bovi and it has silver and gold colloidal in nanomicroscopical form so that means the silver and gold colloidal can go directly into the human cell. Uh, there are many legions that uh, the kings were searching the water of life and even we had some translations of uh, Sumerian uh, plates and the, the translation was the gods were searching the water with gold and we I asked myself many times why here around this area where the Sumerians were living you have an inlay of an eye and then showing exactly the place where this water is and there is another continent here on this map here that's next to Asia that's from the northeast Japanese island down further than Taiwan and Professor Kimura told me and he wrote also a book about the sunken continent Mu that he thinks because of his research that from the northeast island of uh, Japan now Russia until far under Taiwan there once existed a long continent and you have it here and that means that this stone map should be at least older than 10,000 years but then the big question how could somebody make such a perfect map already 10,000 or more years before our time this is a close-up you can see here Iraq Saudi Arabia the Mediterranean and the eye inlay the long continent here and this eye and here again the line coming down here and the inlay where the pieces were found here where the circle is. Uh, this is the so-called pyramid with the shining eye. Even Jim used it for his new bestseller. So it means it is a very, very famous but also very, very old symbol and this is the only existing really pyramid with the eye. It has exactly 13 steps like the pyramid on the one US dollar and very strange our exhibition where I showed this uh, pyramid in original in Vienna the opening was on 21st of June 2001 and this crop circle appeared in Eastfield in England on the 21st of June 2001 and the next circle the pyramid with the eye was showing on 21st of July 2002 in Bacon Hill it's the pyramid with the eye and the 33 lines 33 7 9 13 always in my research I find these numbers. The strange thing with this one and other artifacts found in Ecuador that if you put black light on it the eye shines really very very strong and the natural color is kind of light green and gray and the most impressing for me was that on the bottom of the pyramid you have here in gold inlays the Orion constellation and an unknown writing. This unknown writing we found on stones all over the world. In Ecuador, in Colombia, in Illinois, in Glossel, France, in Calabria, Italy, in Turkmenistan, in Malta and Rex Gilroy, Gilroy has some pictures on his uh, website and I found out that some of the stones he shows with unknown writing presents the same writing. That means there must have existed a global civilization long long time ago and there was only one man able to translate this language, Professor Kurt Schildmann, he was the president of the German Linguistic Association. He spoke and wrote more than 40 languages perfect and he could translate this writing and he called it pre-Sanskrit because it's older than the oldest writing and the translation of these four letters on the bottom of the pyramid was the sun 
of the creator comes. And when uh, an American professor with his Tuareg friend from Northern Africa, Tuareg, was watching this picture on uh, Project Camelot interview, he was contacting me and he was informing me that his Tuareg friend was shocked when he saw this writing because it, he said it looks like our former, former writing and one sentence he could translate that was sun. And the Tuaregs, uh, on the research of Professor Marcel Homais, he was a famous French archaeologist, and he was writing a book and he was writing that the Tuaregs, on his research, had a connection to the sunken continent Atlantis. And even if you read the Bible, there is the sentence, until the, the building of the Tower of Babel, the whole human spoke one language. And we found definitely stones with the same writing all over the world on different continents. And for example, the stones from Glossel, France, they were found already in 1924. So who could have been able to make stones before 1924 and bring, him from, bring them from South America to North America, even to Australia, in the hope that one day archaeologists find it and they break their brain, what could it be? Here you have one artifact from the same place showing how to hold the pyramid. You see here the two eyes, you see the right hand, on the right hand the pyramid and on top of the pyramid the left hand. On the next stone you see a man sitting on a stone holding the pyramid, having something flat like a helmet on his head Go, uh, with a kind like antenna going up to this object. From his eyes, rays are going out, and here you can see two boat men or people. And here is the helmet, a flat metal helmet, and here you can see that something was broken away. Maybe this was this helmet, and this antenna was not found there. Another strange artifact is this big cup with 12 little cups. On the big cup you have a perfect star constellations and we did research with a computer program, astronomical program, and we found two ages fitting these star constellations. One was about 12,000 years ago and the other one was zero, meaning starting of our 2010 years calendar. So, if I would be, uh, if I would like to, to talk um, a funny story, I would say maybe this could be the Graal, but who knows? Twelve little cups, one big cup. The big one is inside, very magnetical, outside nearly nothing. And I talked with many geologists, they said it is impossible. If the stone includes iron material, it must be the same magnetically from both sides. This cup is not. And here you see the perfect star constellation with Orion, Pleiadian, Betelgeuse, and these three big stars are building a perfect pyramid. And also the inlays of the stars are shining very strong if you put black light on it. Here you have small cups. And you can see the numbers, they are looking like the Mayan numbers, but they are different, a little bit different. This is a stone plate with the same star constellation with two figurines, both looking up, and also the eyes and the star constellation is shining under black light very strong and lightly. This is damaged here, it had the form of a heart, and if you look here, you can see the closed eyes, the nose, the mouth, the long bird, and the long hair, here damaged also. Geologists explained me, the nature does not change the color in a stone perfectly on one place from brown to black. So there is no explanation how this black color could have been made. And if you look very close, uh, very sharp to this face, 
many of uh, my friends, when they saw first time this picture, they said it looks like the Shroud of Turin. So now we have an inlay in Israel, we have a big cup, we have 12 little cups, and we have a hard stone with a face which looks like the Shroud of Turin. Of course, it could not be the Graal because those pieces must be older or the same age like the world map. That means that they might be older than 10,000 years. Of course, those artifacts are not accepted by the official archaeologists in Ecuador because, as I said, they do not have any connection to any uh, accepted or researched pre-Columbian culture in South America, especially this cobra head. The cobra never existed in South America. And on the underside of the cobra head, you have seven points here, and you have again here 33 markings. Again, here we have the seven and 33. Also shining very strong under black light. And this is a so-called Kundalini stone. You see here the sexual energy is going on the backbone up to the third eye. Kundalini never existed in any pre-Columbian culture. It comes from Asia. Dolphin must have been also a very important animal in the past in other civilizations because this is a perfect done a dolphin head also the inlays, very strong shining under black light. This is a so-called stone helmet or a stone ball. You can put it on your shoulders or you can lay it down and put your head inside. And we, when we had the exhibition in Vienna, some uh, acupuncture doctors told me that the inlays here are exactly the points, the energy points they are using for the acupuncture. Acupuncture also does not exist in former pre-Columbian cultures. Here you can see how you can use it or you can lay it down and put your head inside. And a few months ago they found in this area an unfinished even. A spiral also shining under black light very strong. And here again a jade plate with seven rows, perfect done which is even not easy in our days, and also when you put it under black light, it's shining very strong. Then there is a stone pyramidal form with the pyramid with the eye and many strange symbols, and some of them I found in the book from Church, uh, from uh, church Ward, The Sunken Continent Mu. He did a lot of research on Mu and Atlantis, and some of the symbols, unknown symbols, on this pyramidal stone we found also in his book. Another pyramidal stone, another one, always the pyramid with the eye. And also in Churchwell's book about the sunken continent, Mu, you can find the pyramid with the eye. So that means it's not only the symbol of the, the uh, Knight Templars or later on from the Masonics, or even now on the one US dollar, the pyramid with the eye must have been a very, very important, powerful symbol. They found also many uh, ceramic figurines there, and you can see, if you look at this picture, you would never think that this was found in South America. Most probably, you would think this is an Asian culture. Here presented the third eye. Very strange. I mean, they have no really connection to any known existing culture, pre-Columbian culture. From Ecuador, we are moving to Bolivia. This is a photo of the Altiplano in Bolivia, where they found many, many black artifacts from an unknown civilization dating is at least older than 4,000 years. You have also in, near Tiahuanaco, you have Pumapunku, 
where you have hundreds of stone plates perfect worked on with 10, 20, 30 tons. But the work is done very precise and very perfect. Nobody knows what was the reason and for what did they do it and especially how did they do it. This is the famous Sun Gate where Posnansky, a German uh, living in uh, uh, Bolivia at the beginning of the 20th century, he was doing research more than 30 years on Pumapunku and Tiwanaku and also on the Sun Gate and he found out that the Sun Gate uh, is ident with the Venus calendar. Look at this work. How could they do such a precise work on thousands of tons heavy stones with primitive uh, tiles? I don't think that's really possible. The next two pictures are satellite pictures from Salar de Uyuni. Salar de Uyuni is the world's largest salt lake, pure salt, in Bolivia in the height of 3,800 meters. Uh, you can see on this photo and also on the next photo that in the salt there are building, uh, uh, building forms. That means that in the salt, in former days, before there was water, before it was uh, changed to salt, that there were living people there. But now I have always three questions. How comes pure salt water up to 3,800 meters? How long does it take until salt water changes into pure salt? Because in 3,800 meters, the temperature is in the night very cold and on daytime it is not really hot. And third question is, how old must those buildings be? I think they are, we talking at least more than 10, 15, 20,000 years. And that shows us, and that was what, what I found out, and what is my opinion, that we had several times global catastrophes on our Earth. In this area, they found also 2.5, 2.6 meter skeletons from humans, but they were always bigger than 2.5, 2.6 meters. And you can see that the jaw is much stronger than our jaw. And the most strange thing is that those skeletons, those skulls, do not have any bone plate connection because we, the Homo sapiens sapiens, we have three bone plates and the fontanella. And when the baby is born, the fontanella is very soft and after growing up, the fontanella closes. These skulls do not have the three bone plates. And it's not a single skeleton, there were several of them. That means we have here definitely a different human like the Homo sapiens or Neanderthal or any known human. But unfortunately, those skeletons are deep in the jungle and only the photos I received through uh, Bolivian friends and uh, we have the approval and the agreement with the military when we, we are flying there, they will bring us to the skeletons and then I have the chance to bring at least one bone with me and we, we can try to do an age dating and a DNA dating. These masks were found in the area of the skeletons and when I presented these masks in Vienna 2001, I was wondering because I thought how they can make so wonderful, beautiful masks, but you cannot look through both eyes. You have to look either through the right one or the left one because at that time I didn't know that those people in this area were over 2.5 meters. And of course, if you are 2.5 meters, your skull is also wider and your eye view would fit perfect those masks. That's another mask. And another one, very strange symbols on it. And always a snake on this figurine you have on top and on the reverse side, you have the snake. 
And that's another, that's one of the animals we find always, always on very old, unknown artifacts. So that means that the snake must have been a very big importance in the past. In our days, as I heard, uh, in Australia you have a lot of very poison snakes. Uh, this is a stone pan flute. And you can see here where it is damaged that inside the stone is brown, but only the surface is very black like lacquer. And we do not know how they could do is, this. And the holes are very precise done. And we asked a Bolivian pan flute player in Vienna to make us some sound samples. And I asked also two professors to join us uh, to check the kind of sound. And it took him uh, nearly half an hour until he got the first sounds out of it. And later on, we found out that every two holes are perfectly connected on the bottom. And when he brought out the sounds, and we did a check on it. Uh, this sound does not uh, connect any known uh, sound, uh, I don't know how you call it, uh, do, re, mi, fa, si, fa, Yeah, it does not fit any, one tone was high, deep, very deep, middle, very high, but we found out that these tones uh, have a connection with the brain waves. So I think they might have been used either for meditation or for healing. This is like a boat with three holes. And this is very small. And when he tried with the same force, power, to get out sounds of this small flute, it didn't work. And when he used it very soft, we got the same sound like the dolphin sound. Now we are going to Colombia. This is the so-called genetical or embryological disc. I, ha I have here the perfect replica of the original and I leave it later on here on, on, on the stage in the break so you can check it by yourself. This material, we did material check in Vienna. It is Lydite. Lydite is a very hard stone. Uh, it is nearly the same hardness like granite, but it is formed like leaves in the structure. So it would not be able for us in our days to do this and the following artifacts from the same material because it's just impossible. We, we did a material check in Vienna and also the most famous or the most uh, perfect uh, expert did a check on the plate and on the other material and he told me afterwards, I cannot tell you how they did it, when they did it and how old it is, but one thing I can tell you definitely from the same material, we are not able in our days to do the same artifacts. But the strange thing on this genetical disc is that you have things on it which we only are able to see with microscope. For example, here you have the human egg with spermia inside and without spermia. You have here the spermias. You have on the reverse side, uh, here you can see the comparison of a microscope photo inside a lady of the human eggs. And on the reverse side, you have different kind of fetus, but you have here male, female, and on the other side, male, female, and child. And Professor uh, Gutierrez, the Colombian owner of this collection, he thinks that these this disc shows uh, the transformation from frog to human, which I do not really agree. But it is very strange that how were they able to do this uh, piece and the other following pieces from this material, where we would not be able to do it in our days. 
And why did they show the face so big with uh, round eyes? Why didn't they show how they really looked? Or the other question is, did they really look like they presented themselves here? This we cannot approve. This is a knife, and in the, it's the same material, Lydite, and you have here the mother's head and the baby, and the bone line is around the neck of the baby, and here you have an arrow going down. That means it shows for what to use if the, the line is struggling, strangling the baby, they should use this knife to cut the line. This we called birth help spoon. It is this size, and you have here the mother's head, uh, the, the, the vagina and the baby's head coming out. And on the reverse side, you only can put precisely this finger inside and then you ho can hold it only with your two fingers. And in Vienna, some uh, doctors were checking this piece and they told me it would be even safer than our instruments when the baby doesn't come out to help it. Because with this instrument, it would not be able to damage the baby's head because you cannot use power, because you only can use the three finger. So that means you really could help to get the baby out, but you could not damage the baby's head. And this is the same material. That means the, the lydite, the structure is like leaves. So it would not be possible today to make this form in the same material. So that's why he guaranteed that lydite, the same pieces, and this piece is about this size, it would not be able for us to make it also these pieces and if you see here each piece is done in perfect style and here you can see how they were holding those pieces this you know from Easter Island but this is a very small one found in the Colombian jungle looks like the Maui on the Easter Island. Now we are jumping to uh, Guinea Conakry, Western Africa. Uh, Professor Pitoni, an Italian geologist, gave me those photos, this one and the next one, and you can see here a lady's head, the breast until here. It is granite, very hard, it is in the mountain and it is definitely not natural made because you can see here the face and the size from here to here is 150 meters. And the face is definitely not black African. Uh, some uh, skull experts did a measurement and everything and they said it's either Asian or South American. Now we are going to Sierra Leone. This prof the same Professor Pitoni, he was working for the Italian government in uh, diamond mines and there was a legend uh, that Allah, they are Muslims there, Allah was angry to some of his angels and he made them to stone and he threw them to earth. He put the sky, concentrated the sky and threw it to the earth and he put the stars, he took the stars and he threw the stars also to earth and that means this is a so-called sky stone, we call it sky stone because they found stones in various sizes, very blue, like really sky blue and we did a research, material research in Vienna it is an artificial stone, it is not natural. We could find out, out all the materials, the ingredients, but what the scientists could not find out was the color. How could they make it that blue? And another thing, uh, Barcelona University found out that some of those stones includes up to 13% we call it iridium, I think in English iridium, 
This is a material which does not exist on our Earth, but we can find it on impact places. This is one of the nomolis, so-called the stone changed angels. Here you have another one, granite, very heavy, nearly half a meter in size. You have an elephant and you have a big man sitting on it. That means even in Africa, every tribe has the legions of the giants. But then, very strange, you have other pieces, half human body with some reptile face. And this is the oldest one. The other stones, always when Professor Pitoni, while they were digging for diamonds, found one of those uh, mon uh, statues. He always took some organic material from the finding place and he did always an age dating. The youngest one was about 2,500 years and the oldest one was this one. He found it in around 50 meter deepness and it looks like a kind of dinosaurs, and inside this figurine was a small metal ball. And when I got these pieces for the exhibition in Vienna, I brought the statue and also the metal ball to the Natural Historical Museum for research, the material research. Next morning, the professor called me and she said, Mr. Donner, I think somebody did a bad joke on you. I said, why? She said, because I did a material uh, check on the small metal ball, and you know what it is? Chromatic steel. And I know that chromatic steel was found by an Austrian 1904. So I thought, oh, somebody really did a bad joke, but I don't believe that Professor Pitoni makes a joke on me. So I called him immediately, and I said, Professor, we have a big problem. We did a material check on the metal ball. He said, oh yeah, what is it? I said, chromatic steel, professor. He said, wow, that's sensational. I said, no, no, but it's, it's a modern piece because chromatic steel, 1904, uh, by an Austrian. So he was laughing and he said, Klaus, what do you think? I open a stone, a 17,000 years old stone statue because it makes a strange sound. No, it did make a, stro a strange sound. So I was thinking, I was wondering what is inside because there is no opening at the mouth and there, this place was closed completely so he couldn't see that there was a hole in former time. So he did uh, x-ray from all the sites, and he sent me then the x-rays, which proved that the statue was closed when he found it, and the metal ball was inside. 17,000 years, approximately, chromatic steel. So the big question, how those people would have been able to make chromatic steel? Now we go to the question, did human exist together with dinosaurs? because in Texas, in the Palaxi River, when it was very, very dry, they found dinosaur steps and human footsteps. So of course, as you can believe, the official archeologists and anthropologists said that the creationists did do that to make a big sensation. So it was proved that they, this was not done in our days. It was old and several years later it was another very dry season and they broke away part of this plate and under this plate was a second plate again with dinosaurs and human footsteps. In Bolivia they found three years ago an old stone with a perfect human footprint and the age of this stone is approximately 15 million years. This is one of the most famous so-called opart, out-of-place artifact, the hammer of Texas. We had this hammer in Vienna and also in Berlin in the exhibition, and I got the approval from Dr. Bo, the director of the Creation Evidence Museum, to do uh, a very, very 
good research on this hammer and on the stone at the Fresenius Institute in Germany, which is the best material checking institution in Europe. And I have to say, 60% the hammer is not 14 million years old because they found out that the wood is not petrified. But they found out that the metal is a very strange combination and they found out that this piece and the second piece, the, the top piece, is the same material because many of the archaeologists and anthropologists said that they would have put the hammer inside the stone. No, the stone was inside, uh, the hammer was inside the stone. But one other thing, there is a last check necessary because in the second stone is a mus mus muscle inside. Uh, a shell, <laughs> thank you. There's a shell inside and if we can prove that this is a seashell, then the hammer is really that old. But if it's from clear water, then it would prove that the hammer is young. So next time when I get the hammer, we try to do the last check. Until now, I have to say 60% this artifact is not that old as uh, presented until our days. This is another thing, it's a stone plate, it's a positive and negative of one foot step, like a shoe step, and inside is a trilobite, crashed through the weight. But trilobites, they are not existing since at least 230, 300 million years. This metal pot was found in United States inside a big stone uh, coal block and you can see that it was under heavy pressure because the coal definitely was going inside partly of this iron pot but the coal in this area where this metal pot was found is at least geological dating 65 million years and it goes it ident with many pieces Michael Cremo wrote in his book Forbidden Archaeology. So I personally also think that human's age is much, much older than we know until now. And here we have other very interesting artifacts from Peru, Ica. This is Professor Cabrera. He was a doctor in Ica, a small village close to the Nazca lines, and he collected the last 40 years more than 12,000 stones within carvings, and also thousands of terracotta figurines showing dinosaurs, dinosaurs with human, showing heart transplantations, brain operations, and many other things. I have to say I was three times there, also with a geological scientist. We did the checking on many of the stones, and I have to say the majority of the stones, especially the very strange ones, they are really very, very old. But Professor uh, Dr. Cabrera had also many new made stones in his collection. He was very fanatic. So I think at the time when he couldn't get new artifacts, he really ordered a man to do some new stones. And it's pity, but that sometimes happened. So I have to say definitely the majority of his artifacts, they are really old, very old. Some of them probably millions of years, but he, has, he had also, he passed away, he had also some new done in his collection. Here you can see the dinosaurs with human, dinosaurs with a fish, a man looking up to the stars. Here you have a kind of pyramid, very interesting. We checked very carefully this stone and the patina is really very old. 
This map is also very, very old, very heavy, a very big stone. And here you have some terracottas from his secret chamber. He called it secret chamber. Dinosaurs with human. Here you have stomach operation. And these two shells are showing really faces. I mean, very strange shells. He, he kept them also as some very special artifacts. Now we are going to Mexico, to Acambaro. Acambaro is about three hours by car west of Mexico City. Uh, there was a German living from nine, around 1920 up to 1945, and they found on one mountain over 35,000 terracotta pieces, with many of them showing really dinosaurs. And Hepgood did research on it, and two other American researchers did age datings in America, and those pieces are between 2,000 and 6,000 years old. So there is the big question, how could those people know how dinosaurs are looking like? This is another very interesting piece because if you look at this piece, you think this is an Egyptian artifact. It is not. It is also from the same place from Acambaro, also this one. And they really had more than 35,000 pieces. And all those pieces are still not accepted by the Mexican government as originals. Even there are really existing age datings between two and six thousand years. Why they cannot be accepted? Because people could not have known even two or six thousand years ago how dinosaurs are looking like. This is a drawing of the so-called Burr's Cave in Illinois in the United States done by Russell Burroughs who found in the early 1980s an underground tunnel system, and he brought out thousands of stones with ink carvings with an unknown writing, the one I showed you on the bottom of the pyramid from, with the eye. And he also wrote a book. He explained that there are sarcophagus, pure gold inside, that there are mummies looking like Egyptian, that there are big overman sized statues with diamonds and precious stones and everything. <clears throat> so he brought some of the stones to some museums and they all told him those are frauds, new done. So then he started to sell stones. And even he found a lot of gold objects and he and two of his friends were melting this gold and we found out, especially uh, Luc Bergin, uh, a Swiss uh, journalist, he found out that there exists in Switzerland a bank account on the name of Russell Burroughs and his two par partners, three men. Two of them died, and so Russell Burroughs cannot take the money out by himself and there are five million US dollars. So how can he make five million US dollars with just stone frauds? So it's reality that he really found a lot of gold. Then he wanted to show this place to Wayne May, the publisher of uh, an archaeological magazine called Ancient America, and he told him he will show the place if he pays him $10,000, so he said, okay, show me the place, and when they were around the area, Russell Burrow said, no, I decided I don't show you the place. So, Wayne May knew approximately where this area is, and he called ground penetrate radar specialist, and they did a research, and if you see here, you see here the statues, you see the gold sarcophagus, which he drawed by himself, Russell Burrows, and here you have gold detections, the sarcophagus. You have also statues here. And the whole system is much bigger 
than even he discovered yet. So that means uh, Wayne May is now trying to find an entrance to prove that this underground tunnel system with gold sarcophagus really existed. And here I show you some of these stones, always with the same writing here, but with strange humans on them. Here like an Egyptian, the same writing. This is like the Greek alpha, and also the strange writing. This could be Tanis, the goddess of the Middle East, and the unknown writing. Also these marble plates he sold, he brought out of this tunnel and he sold it. And this symbol, and that one, I found also in the book from Churchward, The Sunken Continent Mu. Here you have an Egyptian goddess that again looks like Egyptian, but always this so-called pre-Sanskrit. This is a Ushapti found in the United States on another place in a mound building, in an old former mound grave. So I uh, got the information from Rex Gilroy that he also found a broken pyramid and some hieroglyphs in Australia, and I believe him because if this civilization could even go to the United States, why they couldn't have been able to come to Australia? That's another small stone plate, again found on another place while ground working by a farmer, and it shows also typical and 100% Egyptian goddess. Then another place, Utah, uh, Mr. Bowers found around 30 years ago a tunnel system, and inside the tunnel he found two mummies. The male was about three meters in size with red hair and a red beard and a big sword, sword uh, and armors. And the lady was blonde and 2.7 meter, perfect mummies. And he brought out of this cave 60 stone uh, cassettes with metal plates with another but sometimes very similar looking writing like the ones I showed you before on metal plates. 60 perfect done stone boxes with metal plates with unknown writings and drawings on it. This stone is from Colombia. It's very interesting because on one side you have the uh, writings like the other one I showed you, but on the second side, on the opposite side, you have a different uh, style of writing in Koral's inlay. That's again a stone from Sutta Tausa in Colombia. That's also from Sutta Tausa, Colombia. And now we are in Calabria, in Italy. 20 years ago, Dr. Tolone, a judge found on his ground over 150 artifacts, mainly uh, terracotta artifacts. And this plate is about one meter and uh, 40, 30 centimeters wide. And there is a second man who was able to translate these unknown writings up on the connection with Professor Schildmann, his name is Professor Raso, an Italian professor, and he translated this big plate. And it was talking, the translation was talking about a small stone circle, and close to the stone circle, an ancient elephant, a mastodont statue, about two meters in size, and in this area, there are the, the graves of the sea kings. And if you read some readings from Edgar Cayce, when he was talking about Atlanteans, he called them the sea kings. So when Adriano Forgione, the publisher of uh, Phoenix magazine in Rome, 
got this translation from Professor Raso. He went to the area of Professor Toloni and he found definitely the stone circle looking like Stonehenge but much smaller. He found the ancient elephant statue very much damaged already through the weather. That means it must be very, very old, but you could see on the photos that it was not an elephant, not a mammoth, it was definitely a mastodont. That means it must be very, very old. And with ground penetrate radar, they found also a huge underground tunnel, but still the Italian government did not give the allowance to dig there. So that means if this language would not be able to translate, how could he found, find upon the translation the stone circle, the mastodon statue, and the underground tunnel system? So it proves that this language is translatable. Transla uh, translatable. But in every country, those species are modern frauds. They are not accepted by the official archaeologists. And again, many of the artifacts are showing always the sun and the same writing. Now we are going to the story of the giants, the legion of the giants. This skull was found in, was found in Peru. And here is a model how this person must have looked like. That also, this is the original skull, and this is a model. These skulls, this photo is from early 20th century. It was done in Malta, Mediterranean. And the skulls were shown until 1968, and then they disappeared. And again, Adriano Forgione, the publisher of Phoenix magazine, went with the Italian television right away to Malta, and they contacted the ministry, and they got the allowance to film and photograph the skull plates. But the first information at the museum was, we don't have them. And Adriano showed them the old photo, then they said, okay, we have to look in our storage. And next day, they brought the skull, the skull top of the skulls, and you can see it's much larger than a normal skull. And the strange thing on these skull plates is that they have only one uh, line over the middle of the skull. That means, again, it is not a Homo sapiens sapien, and it would be also interesting if we could get the allowance to do a DNA and age dating on these skulls. But it remembers me on the Egyptian pharaoh skulls because they are going to the back. You can deform a skull, but if you deform a skull, the skull is getting up. But you cannot deform a skull to the back because you, ha you, sh you must close the fontanella. That means that the baby would die. Here you see it perfect. We have three stone plates, and these skulls, they have only one bone line over the skull. This is a so-called deformed skull from Ica, Peru, from the Maria Reiche Museum. That's another one. But you do not see the deforming, uh, uh, the deformation artificially. And this, many of the specialists, doctors, university professors, they told me this is impossible a deformed skull because you, through deformation you cannot create the double of bone material. And this skull even has hair on top. That means it would be very easy to do a DNA analysis and an age dating, and I also do not think that this skull is a Homo sapiens sapien. Look at those strange skulls. And they were all found very close to the famous Nazca lines in Peru. Here we go to the story of the giants. This is a footstep from South Africa 
This is Professor J. James Hurtak, a famous researcher, and he did a real good research and also other scientists, and they say this is not human done, it is not natural, it is uh, a real footstep. But here you see a normal human. I show you later the, some bones of a 7.6 human skeleton from Ecuador and up to 10 meters, Professor Muldashev reported me from Tibet. This would be the shoe size of this giant. It would be number 177. It was 130 centimeters long. These three footsteps, the Russian eye doctor and researcher Professor Muldashev went to northern Syria because he got the information of three giant footsteps where of course the official archaeologists are saying this is human done for some kind of ceremony. So he went there with five different scientists, archaeologists, geologists, anthropologists, ethnologists, and they did a check on those three footsteps. They put even water inside to check if you go with two foot, food inside a weak material and you make a step ahead and you want to go back out of it, you have to put your weight on the heel and you can see here that it is perfect done. So they took also some material from this so-called stone with them and they did in Russia a material check and it was definitely cement. Here you can see how big this footstep was. Also, they did a measurement and they said uh, this human must have been at least between six and seven meters. Here you have bones. They were found 1964 in a small valley in Ecuador. There was a part of a mountain breaking down and some broken bones were shown off. So the people there were very anxious and they called Father Carlos Vaca. He was working in hospitals and he knew, he knew how human bones are looking like and he saw that these were human bones and the measurement gave him uh, the size of 7.6 meter. This bone I got from his family and we did a research in Vienna and it's definitely part of a human heel bone but the specialist told me, yeah, but it looks exactly like a human heel bone and it can be only a human heel bone, but it's impossible. I said, why? They said, because it's five times bigger than ours. It would be at least 7.5 meters. This is the other side. This is a part of the nose bone. And this is so-called os occipitale, which is under our skull, is usually this size. And the one we brought from Ecuador is at least exactly five times bigger. And there exists reports from ancient history, from Chiesa de Leon, from uh, 1573, he wrote, Today we found at the coast of Esmeralda several human skeletons and they were five times taller than we. That means the people at, those, at this time they were about 150 centimeters. If you multiply five times, you have 7.5 meters. Then we found these eggs in a museum. It is called a ceremonial eggs, but you can see even here where it was roped. And it is 70 centimeters, granite, very heavy. And again, we did the measurement with an existing normal stone eggs and five times taller, you are again exactly at 70 centimeters. That's another very big stone axe from Ecuador. The next photos are showing 2.6 meter skeletons from Utah, United States. And here we have the crystal skulls. This one was found in Guatemala. And we did a research in Vienna with Dr. Distelberger, the expert who checked us also the genetic disc. And after several hours, he told me it was done with a very sharp instrument out of the block in a raw form. Then it was uh, 
done with uh, quartz sand because he could find some scratches on the skull. And then he said he thinks that they polished it with leather, which must have taken also a long, long time. And then he said, I cannot say how old this skull is, because the crystal itself is millions of years, but I can say this skull must have been long, long time under the earth, because here he could find some corrosion, and he said this corrosion does not come N not earlier than five, six hundred years, but I think it's even older. So that means that this crystal skull is a really old Mayan crystal skull. This one is from Peru. This is a Mongolian skull, and when I had it on display in Switzerland, Nina, a Russian shaman, came, and it was the 11th of November 2004, and she got from this Mongolian crystal skull, the information. In a few days, a big wave will kill hundreds of thousands of people. And you know that on 26th of December, the big tsunami in Asia happened. So, I have to say, I did not believe in many things, especially when I heard esoteric things. I said, oh, leave me alone, esoteric people, they all dreaming and so. But in the last 10 years, I changed a lot because I had experienced that many times my hair was just going up like this. And I know that there are many things between heaven and earth which we do not know, but many of you, I'm quite sure you know. I don't know. I just show the pieces. That's from Ukraine, that's from northern Italy, that's from China. And I would end my speech with Rodin's thinker. And this one is from Akambaro, a thinker around 4,000 years old. And this one is a thinker from Ecuador, about 2,000 years old. And that's what I have to say. I cannot give you an answer. I just showed you and explained you some things. But now I give you the chance. You can think about it, what you saw, and you can make your own mind. There is no really answer until these days. Thank you very much.